Well, good evening and welcome again to another session of Talks and Chats. We are so blessed. We're just thankful that this evening we're going to have a good time. I'm excited to sit down with my brother here to my right. He's going to introduce himself when we get started. As always, I'll tell you, please, please share this message, share this broadcast on YouTube, share it on Facebook, Instagram, share it on all your social media. And um, I believe as we share in these talks and chats that people are being blessed. That's what I've heard. And uh, I think it's good that people can hear from the body of Christ. Gary is a part of the body of Christ. He's a member here at Zion Global Ministries. So we're going to sit down and, and chat with him tonight. So without further ado, my man, Gary Wells. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you bless for having you, me. Bless you. Bless you. I'm glad that you could uh, take some time out of your busy schedule because I know you're a busy man uh, and just sit down and talk with us for a minute. You know, oh, by the way, in front of us, uh, this is a checkerboard that's on a piece of material. So if you happen to see some checker pieces and don't know if we're going to touch that, but never know because there was a very visual uh, piece that pastor used mm -hmm. in uh, using this as an example of our lives as we go through our pathways and our journey and knowing who we are uh, because, okay, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, whoever on alone. the red team got, uh, yeah. they got a task on hand because yeah. yeah. only got two pieces left. Two reds <laughs> against 10 blues, but see, this is when God's hand is on you. See, that's what he said. Yes, that's sir. what he said, when God's hand is on you. And he's talking about this in his series, My Yes for His Call. And, um, and we'll get into that because I know it has something to do with you. Yes, sir. But I really want you to share with the people Tell us who you are, tell us kind of what you do, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Gary Wells. I've been a member here at Zion for about four years. Me and my wife, Natasha, we joined around 2018. And um, I work, my original background is in fitness. So mm. like originally personal training, that's how I met Pastor Marsha. Okay. She started to invite us out to like the Seder meals. Got it. So we started to come out, me and Natasha, this is before we were even married. And um, from there, we just continued to come. Mm. But um, originally my background is in personal training, but the last two years I've been working within recreation. Okay. I work as a community center director with the city of Cincinnati at the Millville Recreation Center. Millville? Millville. So yeah. I'm in the heart of it. Yeah, you're in the heart. I'm, I'm in the heart of it yeah. on, the, on the day to day. But okay. um, my goal is to make an impact on those kids, man. Okay. Um, and just anybody around me. Like, I like to motivate people. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a fitness trainer at heart. So I got you. I'm always looking to push people out of their comfort zone, but to show them what they can achieve. So got you. So in Millville, that, that recreation center, who, who is it serving? Yeah. It's serving um, the Millville community, mm. the Cumminsville community, South mm. Cumminsville, mm. Wow. Moosewood, Ooh. and uh, <laughs> North Fairmount, and a little bit of Camp Washington. But yeah, we serve in those communities right there, but we get people that come from Westwood, we get people that come from Price Hill, we get people that come from like pretty much all over the west side. This is your day-to-day? -day. This is my day-to-day, -day, Okay, yes, okay. So for anybody tuning in, my man Gary, we will keep you in prayer. Because uh, I know for sure you're in the thick of it. Uh, just pulling in the parking lot, coming out the door, not sure the mix of folks that come to you, but mm -hmm. those communities, you know, communities get a bad rap. They, they, they definitely you know? do. And that's the biggest <laughs> thing that I'll notice is like, now I came from areas like Millville. Like I grew up in a lot of areas in Cincinnati from mm -hmm. Warner Hills to Mount Auburn, Wind Terrace, mm -hmm. Westwood. So, I got to see a lot of different, I get to see a lot of different hoods. Got it. And I got to understand like how certain people move within those areas. So I maneuver through that area just like I would when I was growing up. Okay, okay. So it gives me an opportunity to have a relationship with people. So the way I see people in here, the way I see people in Millville, the way I see people if I'm in, I don't know, Mason somewhere. Don't matter. It's the same energy. Okay. It's the same exact energy. And I think people respect that. Yeah. They respect it because they can tell you being genuine. Like they see your authenticity. So 
I always try to keep it 100 with people, yeah. always. I would say that to all of our, the body of Christ, to Zion Global Ministries, and to, to anybody. Um, if you're authentic, that's who you are, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to make up anything because you're, no, you're just being who you are anyway, right? So what we see on a Sunday to Sunday basis is Gary Well. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. On a Sunday to Sunday basis. <laughs> okay. Outside of like me playing video games and having my little times where I'm uh, a little more aggressive. But outside of that, like if I play basketball, if I'm okay. at work, I'm, I'm pretty much the same person. Okay. So you ask 10 people about me, they have, you'll probably get four different stories. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but they, they, they be it's kind of similar. So in your, your style, because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this somewhere, but in your style of personal training, um, what would you say? What's it, is there a style that you have? Is there a technique or something that you use? What what kind of helps would, you to push people? Yeah, I would say my style is kind of is inspired by like multiple influences. I would say like um, Kobe Bryant would be a, a big inspiration mm -hmm. because he was so relentless. Mm -hmm. So like that part. I try to put into like strength training. Okay. And then you get like a guy like um, Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher. Mm -hmm. I listen to him on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So you get some of that um, more vocal inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then like, I'm a laid back, funny kind of guy. So okay. I'll throw some jokes in there too okay. during the training. But a lot of the things I like to implement is like, um, like circuit training. So when I'm doing training sessions, a huge portion of my training session is going from one exercise to another with taking minimum rest mm. to help build endurance. Okay. So that's one of my biggest focus because okay. like you can build the muscles up, but if you ain't building your heart, it ain't, it ain't going to matter too much yeah, for most people. It ain't going to matter too much. That's so interesting. I like to really focus on a, like the, the circuit endurance type of training. Mm. So going back to your job, um, I know you're interacting with a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. um, but in your role, did that get you closer to the people or are you kind of just more so keeping the center kind of functional and running? You know what? It can be that it can it could be that I wouldn't be hands on, mm -hmm. but my personality, okay. I make sure that I am hands on. Okay. So okay. as a director, my goal and my role should be to make sure that programming is functioning within the center. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the programs that I run or are part of running, I actually do. Okay. So instead of me just bringing in a program leader to lead a boot camp, mm -hmm. I'm teaching a boot camp. Okay. <laughs> it's it's going to be me. I might not do it every day, but I'll do it once or twice a week. Okay. Just to make sure that I'm making that same impact and I'm getting to know the people. Mm -hmm. um, similar with the, um, the summer camp. I run a summer, summer day camp um, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Some directors might not be hands-on every day. Mm -hmm. I'm with the kids probably about a good 70% of the time. Okay. Taking them from location to location, making sure they get there, making sure they eat, making sure any need that they will have within that time that they're at the center, I'm making sure that it's done. Or if I'm not directly doing it, I'm making sure that one of my staff members is getting the job done. So these kids know you? Oh yeah, they know me. Mr. Gary, I'm okay. Mr. Gary. <laughs> okay. So if I went down there, without you being there and said, any of y'all know Mr. Gary, that would be a resounding yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> that matters. That matters. So I'm just, I'm just kind of feeling you on that, the, mm -hmm. the impact that you have, you know, because if sure. you're hands on and you touch, I mean, personal training, I know that's more of a one on one mm -hmm. or you could be doing a group, but that's a one on one. Yes, sir. So you're touching people right mm -hmm. now in that setting and maybe in your upbringing, is there a specific type of person that, you know, you just get drawn to that, that you're like, I can't help myself. I gotta, I gotta go help them or support them or whatever. Oh, that's a tough question. I would say, I don't know if it's necessarily a personality type that I'm drawn to, but my wife tell me all the time, it's personality type that might be drawn to me. Okay. Okay. But your personality type that I'm drawn to, I try to be as like, fair as possible mm -hmm. with everybody that I come around. So mm -hmm. I think I'll try to find like things that I have in common with other people mm -hmm. and then use that as a home base. So mm -hmm. I might not have the same thing in common with everybody, got you. but we'll touch base on something for sure. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'm like, I'm, I think, think of myself as like a well-rounded guy. So it's something that we have in common and we can de definitely get a little bit deeper whenever you're comfortable with that. Okay. 
So, you know, um, some people gravitate to folks that are, you know, that like the underdog, right? Mm -hmm. It's like somebody that's like, man, they just, they need a break. They need to be able to get to that next and they struggle, you mm -hmm. know, and I tend to get pulled in to folks who need to go to that next, you know? Yes, and sir. so it just, I can't help it, you know? And to help someone, to encourage somebody that's just kind of, like you're saying, it's a part of your DNA. Yes, sir. Right? So this is why you do this kind of work. So I would anticipate that has caught Pastor's eye. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think that has caught Pastor's eye. And it's interesting because this past week he talked about this whole series that he's in, and mm. he mentioned Gary. And I'm thinking, what other Gary goes to this church that – would have influenced him on this new series. And um, when he said you walked in, I'm like, oh, you mean that Gary? <laughs> oh, the Gary that I really want to sit down and talk to, that Gary, right? Uh -huh. Influenced this series, which I'm sure is gonna take a few weeks to kind of move through all of the, the piece parts that he's gonna touch. Mm -hmm. um, but if you know, and I tell anybody, if you guys have not seen any of the services, the last couple services, you are in for a blessing, a true blessing, because God moved like never before, two services right back to back, mm -hmm. and we're just getting started, right? So I'm kind of like thinking, Gary, what conversation or what did you say or you know, what did you do that stimulated um, where he's going right now. I think it was just coming up and just telling him to use me. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I'm at a point in my life where it's, I'm developing my relationship with the Most High. I'm yeah. developing my relationship with my family, mm. with my wife. I'm just trying to be a better person in every aspect of my life. Mm. And I feel like I can pour, I'm able to pour into people now. Mm. You know, like pouring into people when you, you running on E, mm -hmm. that might not be the best time to try to really pour into people. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm feeling full. Okay. So I, I, I definitely want to make sure that I'm sharing this experience that I have with other people. Like I want to walk in the image of Christ, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you saying what you did moved him into the yes, because you were already into I'm ready mm -hmm. to do whatever I can do. Yeah, it was like yeah. being on the sideline in basketball. I was like, put yeah. me in, coach. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah, I, I, I think he even used that. Put, put, put me in, <laughs> Put coach. me in, coach. Yeah, well, that's, you know, it's, sometimes it's just zeal, and, you know, some people are just zealous to, to, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you come off as humble, you know. Um, so if you were to be used, and I think you're already being used, so, so let's get this clear right now. Being used does not say it's got to be at the church. Mm -hmm. Being used by the Lord means wherever I go, wherever I show up, I can be used at any moment, at any time, mm -hmm. because I'm available. Yes, sir. Right? There's a song that says I'm available. Matter of fact, I think we even sung it Sunday. You know, I'm available to you, Lord. So... But just in light of all that, if you were to kind of go in a certain area to be used, is there a certain area that that's kind of a pull for you? I would probably say um, teens, hmm. young adults, and then health and fitness. Okay. Just because I like health and fitness, I hang my hat on. Like I've been studying health and fitness for over 15 years. Hmm. Um, deeply rooted um, interest in health and fitness, mm -hmm. just based off of seeing members of my family struggle with certain health issues. Mm -hmm. I want to try to make it to where I can help educate people so some of those preventable issues don't, they don't have to come across. Mm -hmm. Like so a lot of the health issues that kind of plague the black community, yeah. type two diabetes, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, mm -hmm to some extent can be prevented mm -hmm. through activity and healthy lifestyle, healthy diet, healthy lifestyle. So primarily health and fitness, but also teens, because I realized the impact that certain people had on me mm -hmm. during those years and how influential and how 
inspiring that can be for somebody that's around the age of 15, 16, 17 years old, mm -hmm. how that can kind of shape you to the person that you will become. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was a high school dropout, mm -hmm. moved to Toledo with uh, my grandmother, went back to school, and then like the basketball coach at the school see me walking down the hallway, said, hey, what you doing? Come see me after school. Just like that. Just like that. I didn't realize the impact that Coach Tuck was going to have on me. Mm. Like, I still live with that. Like, hard work pays off. Mm. So I, did, I, I carry that with me to this day. Like, that's a model that I, I really live by. <laughs> so this, this, this is a coach, right? This is, yeah, this is my high school basketball coach. Like, I played basketball, like, maybe two games of AAU, two or three games of AAU before I got with Coach Tuck. But when I got with Coach Tuck, I was like, you know what? I'm all in. Like, I like basketball. I developed a passion for basketball, but I also developed an understanding of, like, will and determination mm -hmm. and sticking to something, like, mm -hmm. really being dedicated to something. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, I'm not going to say it was all I had, but it was something that kept me on a, on a narrow path. And I'm like, you know what? To play basketball, you got to make sure you're in school. Exactly. <laughs> if you go Without play good grades, school, <laughs> school. Right, right, right. you ain't going to be sitting on this bench. You ain't going to be able to get in the game. Okay. So you're not going to be wearing a uniform. So I went from having bad grades to having respectable grades. I ain't going to say okay. great grades, All but right. respectable grades. Uh -huh. And I was an intelligent kid, like mm -hmm. no issue with class. I just got bored. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't like school work. Mm -hmm. But basketball was one of the things that kept me interested in. Having him in, in my life at that time, it was very, very impactful. So yeah, I understand the, the need of having a role model during those years. So I think teens and uh, young adults would be another area. Okay, so how old are you? I'm 34. 34, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's interesting because as we get our teen ministry really going strong, you know, <laughs> Gary Wells, you hear that? <laughs> Gary Wells, we're gonna we gotta remember that. Um, but that that call, see, see, you set that up. Mm -hmm. Coach Tuck, Coach Tuck called you. Yeah, he just seen me in the hallway. Like I'm just walking he through the hallway. He called out to you. Called out to me. Right. You audibly heard him. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and you responded. And, oh, indeed. Okay. And I thought he was a football coach. Okay. Coach Tuck, a bigger guy. I was a bigger guy at the okay. time. So okay. I'm like, I'm probably about like 250 at the time. So like real, a real big guy. But I was semi-athletic. So I'm thinking as a football coach, I'm okay. like, I ain't really trying to play football. But let me hear what he's saying. He ended up okay. being a basketball coach. Okay. But okay. from there, it, like our relationship grew. Uh -huh. Like ton of respect for Coach Tuck. He definitely was influential he changed my life see so this is this is the i think the way you know god speaks to us right mm -hmm. um you heard coach tuck audibly called your call to you he yes. might not even knew your name right mm -hmm. and so he said hey you know you right mm -hmm. and you responded to that to this day 34 years old yes sir that was probably at 16 15 17 17, yep. okay. I'm 17. Right. so that's 17 years ago mm -hmm. but just like yesterday you probably could remember <laughs> you <laughs> know what probably maybe even what you had on yeah whatever. i had this scraggly little fro yeah. i thought i was like growing some braids I was, I don't <laughs> but see it's but it's, it's a memory it's a memory that's been locked in you mm -hmm. know and so now that you you came to pastor right and you said basically put me in coach i want to be used mm -hmm. and i don't want to put words in your mouth so i'm not um do you know what caused you to even do that i see i can't even tell you what it was uh, i remember telling them that uh, but I, I can't tell you what it was yeah, it was I just like a casual call a call yeah i got you i like that yeah. <laughs> it was a call yeah that's what begins to happen uh -huh. And usually when God begins to call you, he starts to draw you closer, right? Mm -hmm. You know, some people say, oh, I've been called to preach, right? It's like, well, you might not know that yet, mm -hmm. but you've definitely been called to come closer, right? And as you come closer, he begins to give you more mm -hmm. and give you more. You come closer, he give you more, he give you more as you move into what's next for you, right? Yes, sir. So you're volunteering, voluntarily saying yes, basically to his call put you in position hmm. <laughs> see now we're here right yeah put you into position for your next move mm -hmm. right you don't know exactly what that is right uh -huh. now we looked at how you've been shaped 
based on you said fitness is mm -hmm. definitely a part of your who you are definitely. right and you say you feel the call into the teens and young adults and you really think it back to hey this is part of my life mm -hmm. look at my life right and what has happened for me and i know if i can reach people early enough Mm -hmm. or reach them, period. Period, period. Then yeah. that potentially could have a directional change for them. Yes, sir. Right? Because you felt like that happened to you. Oh, yeah, it happened with me. Like, not only my coach, so just like my family, like my grandmother. I moved in with my grandmother when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. It's my dad's mother. Okay. And her impact on me is like everlasting. Mm. Yes, yes, Susie Wells, rest in peace. But yeah, my grandmother, my granny, <laughs> yeah. my granny had an impact on me. She taught me about obedience. Mm. <laughs> like she, she definitely talk taught about, me. Talk about that a little she bit. She taught me about obedience. Like This is I, gonna help somebody. Okay. I'm serious, because it's not just older folks looking, there's young people looking. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and so that, you know, they're tuning in. So it just helps, mm -hmm. you know, with things that you say. 34, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> It'd be different if you're 74, you know, mm -hmm. even though that's still impactful. 34 years old, you ain't too far removed. From, yeah, nah, you know, not at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So One step away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so tell us about your granny. Oh, my granny, Sue. Oh, man, that's, she was an angel. Legit. Like, she, mm. she was the matriarch for my father's side of the family. She kept everything together. And not to say that my family is, like, in shambles or nothing like that. But it's not the same without her presence. Mm. And what she helped instill in me was just being obedient and making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do mm. versus what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> it's a difference. Like okay. she taught me responsibility. Okay. Like she taught me a ton of responsibility. And like I'm the oldest of six. Uh. But it was still like this kind of arrogant irresponsibleness that I was going through with my mom at the time when I moved in with my grandmother, mm -hmm. that she helped, definitely helped correct. Mm -hmm. like she, she was on top of me and she was like, at the time I'm like 12, 13, I'm like, man, she too strict. Mm -hmm. Like, why is she doing all this? I mean, she's super strict. But now I understand, like, okay, it's times you can do what you wanna do, but these times you gotta do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna keep you out of harm's way and this is gonna keep you safe. Mm -hmm. So that, there was a decision for you to move there. Yep. Yep. At 12 years old, my mother had a conversation with me, had a conversation with my granny. And then I, at the end of the conversation, my mom was like, you're you going to be staying here. I didn't understand it at first. I was like, I'm my mom leaving. I'm leaving, too. Like, we about to go back home. Like, now nah, you, you staying here. Mm -hmm. So that was like the beginning of a new chapter for me. I was in like the sixth grade, mm -hmm. sixth grade when that happened. Yep. So you stayed Toledo? No, this was in Cincinnati. Oh, Cincinnati. Eventually okay. Toledo, though. Okay. Yep. Okay. My grandmother moved. My granny moved to Toledo in 2005, okay. and I moved with her. He moved with I her. moved with her. At the time, I wasn't. Uh, I was enrolled in school, but I wasn't attending. Mm -hmm. and we moved in maybe May of 2005. I probably hadn't been to school since like you know what Valentine's Day 2005 was my last day. Mm -hmm. So it's probably about a four month window where I wasn't going to school at all. At all. At all. Standing, I was. I was over it. Staying at home, playing basketball, just trying to kill time, trying to find a job. But I couldn't find a job. At what age? I was 17. Uh, I was 17. Okay. Like, I would, some days I would leave. <laughs> I was like, 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 you're going to like I'm going to school. Yeah, mom, I think I'm going to school. Then maybe come back, back around like 1 o'clock. Ain't nobody there. Mom working. I love my mom to death. Mom working. So it's, it's five of us in the house. So mm -hmm. she, she out providing. So. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back home thinking I'm sweet. <laughs> like, I done got off for one. But really, I was just harming myself. But I learned a lot through that process. I learned a lot about myself. And I was like, if I, if I do, if I go back, I'm going all the way in. Mm -hmm. And that kind of came full circle with Coach Tuck was like, basketball helped me go all the way in. Mm -hmm. It helped me go all the way in. Did you play throughout the rest of your high school? Yep. OK. Yep. OK. So where did the fitness piece kick in at? So the fitness piece kicked in with seeing like my grandmother go through health issues. Now both sides, because it's, it's like getting restarted. Like my mother's mother, my grandma, she's having health issues. Mm. And having an understanding like basketball, fitness, they kind of go hand in hand. But because you play basketball, it doesn't necessarily mean you understand like what true training is. Mm. Like you just show up and the coaches tell you what to do. Right. But I wanted to get, I wanted to kind of dive deeper into that. Like I want to understand 
what make the muscles grow? Mm. What ke keeps the heart healthy? What mm. keeps the lungs healthy? Because okay. these are all like pivotal parts of your body. So okay. I just started to work out on my own. This is before YouTube, so I couldn't just Google it and uh -huh. then YouTube really pop up. YouTube was like, it was in the beginning stages. Right, right. So I'm experimenting in my basement now. Like after I'm done playing basketball, I'm out of high school. I'm like, I really like this. I, I learned certain things just with experimenting with my experiment, experimenting with my body. So I looked at Cincinnati State. I'm like, I want to enroll in school. I want to learn about health and fitness. So mm -hmm. Cincinnati State was the avenue that I pursued and got my associate's degree there. Okay, okay. So that's when you you stepped up here. Yes, sir. <laughs> so it's not long time. I mean, is that recent? Oh no, sir. No, oh, sir. Okay. So the recent the recent one was a uh, business management. Okay. It was okay. associates in business management, and um, that was kind of like, it's the pandemic. We not doing nothing. Let me learn something. Mm -hmm. Let me add to my skill set. Okay. Yep. But um, I graduated from Cincinnati State 2012. Okay. So it's been ten years on ten years. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Ten years on the nose. Okay. Yep, with the health and fitness degree. That's awesome. That's awesome. See, this is what this is really all about. You know, I told you it was just gonna be <laughs> just gonna yeah. be a chat, man. Yes, just sir. as we share, you know. But I really want, as most people, um, they try to figure out what is it that God is calling them to do. A lot of people, a lot of people that's tuning in, or what is God calling me to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and I personally believe He begins to shape you along the pathway, you know, as a part of your next move, right? Yes, sir. As you are moving throughout your life, you're starting to bump into the things that he's calling you to do. Mm -hmm. We talked about this fitness piece, right? Who knew you were going to be in a rec center, right? Did you, <laughs> did you plan that at 15, no, you know, sir. at 20, at 25, right? Okay. Did you really plan to be a personal trainer? You know, you were getting into fitness, but these, these doors, how things start to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And then you said teens and young adults, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the rec center, I'm sure, has some teens. Yes, sir. Or young, young people, right? Okay. So now you're in that arena, arena mm -hmm. okay? And you feel comfortable, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's just a part of it. You know, it's a part of this this path, you know, as God begins to shape you even more mm -hmm. for what else he's going to do with you, right? And you just make yourself available, right? More and more available to do the things that he's called you to do. Yeah, and, and I, I can feel that. That's the blessing. I, I, I can truly feel that because you would think, okay, if you... If you have a passion for it, you can jump right into it. Mm -hmm. Some shaping that got to go on with that. Mm -hmm. Like now, where I am now versus where I was two years ago, just with the interaction with um, the kids that we have at our rec center mm -hmm. is like completely different. Mm -hmm. Like the relationship dynamic has changed. I had to learn like sternness and being firm, but being fair. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have to instill certain things in people mm -hmm. or sometimes you have to be the disciplinarian, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Where I would kind of shy away from that a little bit, right. especially with the kids, I got like a soft spot. Okay. So like the kids would see something, but like, oh, but please. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, you know what? It wasn't that bad. Yeah. Now I'm like, yeah. Mm -mm. I told you two times not to do that. Right. Nah, you, you done for the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no swimming, even if you are crying. Like You hear your granny talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah uh -huh. like and, and my wife uh -huh. and my wife like yeah. she she got on me about like you gotta be you gotta be a little more firm right you gotta be a little more firm so it's important yep and i, I don't have any kids i have two step kids got it step got kids it. Right. but no kids you. myself so my wife she got the two kids i got you she from day one to now okay like two very impactful young men okay and i guess she kind of seen some of the places that i was lacking Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know what, you got to be a little harder. I'm just like, nah, I'm good, man. Just kind of being stubborn with it. But yeah. she definitely was right with that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to share or ask you to share is yes, as you talk to the people directly, man, um, your relationship with God has gone, I would assume, from a particular place mm -hmm. to where you are now. Can, can you talk about, you know, that call or not the call but actually how you got there or 
where where do you feel like you are right now? Shoot, man, that could be a book. I got you. <laughs> it might be a book, but <laughs> just to kind of share on that, I mean, yeah. it's, I think one of the most influential parts of it was Zion. Like this, this church has been like a mainstone for a lot of major events in my life. And this has all been in like the last three years. Mm -hmm. Like I got baptized here in 2020 mm -hmm. and my wife got married here mm -hmm. 2021 mm -hmm. and we just continuing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think this chapter right here is probably going to be one of the most influential chapters right here. Got it. I can feel that. I, I truly could feel that. Got it. And I think Pastor Marsha for that because I was training Pastor Marsha. Mm -hmm. Come on out. And I'm like, man, I, I'm, I might be cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't really do the church thing. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't really brought up in church. Oh, okay. okay. I wasn't really brought up in church. Like, okay. I probably could tell you more Jay-Z verses than Bible yeah. verses, okay. to be honest. But I'm here and I'm, I'm willing to learn. Okay. I got a willingness to learn. So, so you open. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. See, that's what you need to hear, Zion. Open, available, a, a vessel. You know, God uses broken vessels mm -hmm. where nobody is perfect. Zero. Nobody's perfect. You read the Bible long enough, you're like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the characters that are that are in the scriptures are just amazing. You know, that God used them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he could use them. <laughs> that's what the word, that song says. If you could use anything, Lord, mm -hmm. you could use me. Yeah, because anything, there's some anything that's in the scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm coming to learn. I would just be asking, like, Natasha all the time, like, who is this person? She's yeah. like, well, you tell me. Okay. Like, she'll flip it on me because, like, she studied to be a fitness trainer. Okay. And, like, sometime we in the gym, she'll be like, what's this exercise? Uh -huh. And I'm like, well, you tell me. You, you the trainer. Uh, okay, you're getting there. So, yeah, so okay. she'll, she'll flip it back on me. I'm like, who is Timothy? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what you tell me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going in and I'm doing my study and okay. reading a little bit more. So That's it's excellent. working both ways. That's excellent. Well, Zion, this is what we were really here to just have this time of talking, chatting, you know, and sharing. And then we're introducing Gary Wells to some of you that may know him. Some may not know him at all, but now you do. You know a little bit more. And he's going to be working with our young adults and our teens here at Zion Global mm -hmm. Ministry. So we'll go ahead and put that out there for those of you who didn't know him before. We just thank you. We really appreciate you uh, coming out tonight and sharing with us because it's a blessing. It is a blessing to see somebody at 34 years old at this point and, and things that are going on in our society that has a focus direct it and that you want to help at all you know yes, sir. so i appreciate that very much i appreciate you appreciate having it me. very much zion shalom the zion